Good afternoon from the Father Bray Athletic Center, the lower gym on the campus of Iolani School in Honolulu, Hawaii. This is the third place game of the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. It pits the home team, the Iolani Raiders, the four-time defending ILH and HHSAA champions against the Clovis West Golden Eagles from Fresno, California. They are the defending CIF Central Section Division I champions. Last year they finished 21st in the final 2023 Max Preps poll. The Cardinal and Gold against the Red, Black, and White. Coach Ian Young sitting beside me. I'm John Tamanaha. We're getting set for a good one. Yeah, excit <laughs> excited what? for this one, John. Um, what a matchup and similar styles, and both teams trying to bounce back from hard-fought games last night where they were in it for about a half, but the other teams pulled away towards the end. Um, but both teams have terrific guards, like to shoot threes. Um, when you talk about Clovis West, they'll pressure the entire game. Uh, they'll pick up full court, but the pressure doesn't stop. You bring it past half court, you think you've broken the press, but the, pres the pressure continues with half court traps and trailing defenders, knocking the ball from behind. So we use the term controlled chaos for Clovis West, but I think it's a style that Iolani is accustomed to play and is set up to play in. And plus they have the player of the year from last year, Mele Sake, who will look to establish her presence inside. Clovis West, you're talking about their pressure. They do it in all situations. They do it all over the court, made buckets, out of bound plays, all sorts of things. Just when you think you got it figured out, something changes. I was talking to Coach Dean Young just a little bit while ago, and saying, "What aside from finishing third in the tournament, what are you looking for from, from your Raiders today? And he said, composure. Yes. Dealing with the pressure, working together. He's got some young guards. Some of them are undersized. Uh, Clovis West has experience. <laughs> they have that athleticism. They have Coach Craig Campbell's system that he has honed over three decades. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Coach Dean Young's Raiders uh, deal with the pressure. One thing that for sure, which is what happens in the tournament every year, they're going to learn something here oh, yeah. in the next 32 minutes of basketball. Yeah, and it's interesting. It's kind of, kind of counterintuitive. Uh, with pressure, it's not meant to slow you down. It's really meant to speed you up. Good point. Uh, and make you take bad shots and create turnovers. So composure for the Raiders is a great word and a great goal. The Raiders got to this third place game by defeating Kailua on Thursday in the first round, 72 to 51. 72 to 51. Then last night, they got 72 scored against them. Oh, excuse me, sorry, sorry, dyslexia. <laughs> Thank you, Carter. Carter's here, he'll be roaming the sidelines. 72 to 4, 15. I'm not used to seeing 1-5. When I see that, I think 51. Yeah. 72 to 15. Then they got 72 scored on them on Friday night, last night. Sierra Canyon Trailblazers 72, Iolani Raiders 38. Puts Iolani into the third place game. Clovis West in their opening round game. They defeated Kohuku. 75-46, scoring 23 points in the second quarter. Then last night in the semifinals, they lost to Sidwell Friends out of Washington, D.C., 59-33. to You'll see this happen in the Classic. The Golden Eagles were trailing by five at the break, 23-15. to And then sometimes... Things start to happen, things start to break down against these elite teams. Yeah. Sidwell Friends is a top five team. All of a sudden, it becomes 59-33 because you get outscored in the fourth quarter, 24-4. Yeah, there's that explosion in the third quarter 
um, that big run. And I think a lot of times it has to do with, with these top-notch teams. Um, you can hang with them for maybe a half, but eventually they will pull away. What they're getting comes easy, but for what the team playing a top 10 ranked team, everything is a struggle. Um, but a great lesson nonetheless and something to build upon. One thing that stood up to me in that game, Iolani's freshman, Justice Kekao Oha, was at, matched up with super sophomore Jersey Richardson and didn't back down. No. Took it to Jersey um, and had a great game. And so, um, you, you know, after matching up with those great players, now you have to deal with Athena Tomlinson and Araya Smith. Let's get to the starting lineups of Athena Tomlinson and Araya Smith, as you just mentioned, the two guards. Five foot three and five foot two, respectively, but don't let that fool you. <laughs> they play big. You will see. In the front court, you got Riley Walls and Jordan Ibarra will be the starting forwards. And then there's another guard, Keegan Medeiros. She's five foot ten. She is a sharp shooter. Yep. Can't leave her open. The Raiders will counter with their guard heavy lineup as well. The senior, uh, excuse me, the junior, Mia Fry, five foot seven. Also the senior guard, Kiki McGee, five foot five. Sophomore, Haley Fernandez, five foot three. And then Justice Keikaoha, you mentioned her, Ian. She is leading the team in scoring. She is just a freshman, averaging 12.7 points per game here in the preseason. And then Mele Sake at center. And she is in the center circle now. Will jump against Jordan Ibarra. Golden Eagles win the tap. This is Athena Tomlinson. Gives it to Smith, three-pointer. Battles for McGee with it. On the run. Here's the trap. Here's yeah. the pressure. And what you mentioned, it's a trap off of a miss, too. Some teams, they'll only trap off of made baskets. Clovis West will trap and press every single time. Raiders moving the ball rather well through that trap. Resulted in a layup attempt by Mia Fry. But you like to see the aggressiveness early by Mia Fry. And that's what you got to do against a pressing team is attack the basket. Some contact there, no foul. Raiders off and running. Kick a hole shot. Rolls off. And here come the Golden Eagles. Araya Smith with yep. it. Directing traffic. Already you see this up and down pace. I'm not not sure if the shot clock will be a factor in this game. Nelly Sake with the rebound. She wastes no time heading up court. Put back attempt. Mia Fry scores it. Officials timeout. Athena. Athena Tomlinson will put on her shoe. Mia Fry had an excellent game last night, and she was one of those players who played aggressively. Standout play was that coast-to-coast -coast finish on the and one. She looks to build on that success today. Mia Fry scored 10 points against Sierra Canyon, led the Raiders in scoring. That is her third double-figure game of the preseason. Raiders are 11 and one so far in the preseason. Traveling call there. Yeah, Jordan Ibarra tried to keep that pivot foot yeah. down. Um, they tried to run that backdoor play that they've been success successful with. I'm seeing some really good scouting from the Ilani coaches, picking up on that and, and stopping it. Justice K. Kaoha attacking the rack. Raiders lead it four to nothing. 6.15 to go here first quarter. Thanks for joining us on Iolani Live, Iolani School YouTube channel. This Tomlinson-Fernandez matchup is entertaining, quick on quick. Hey, Kaoho got to the rim once again. Could not convert. Smith stops and starts, finds Tomlinson free for three. Can't leave her alone. Athena Tomlinson 
Yeah, she can shoot it in that first night. She made three threes. Struggled a little bit last night with her shot. I mean, that's because there's multiple defenders coming out on her, closing out hard. Fernandez trapped in the corner. Ball goes off Smith. Callie Piper checking in for the Raiders. Replaces Mele Sake, who heads to the other end bench as the Raiders are the visiting team here. In this third place game, wearing their new red uniforms. Team Jordan with the white numerals. Clovis West wearing their third uniform of the tournament. Started out with a pink third yeah. variety. Dark uniforms last night. They are in the white, off and running after that block shot. Smith kicks it out to Tomlinson. She hit two in a row, yes. A quick six for Athena Tomlinson, the 2023 Fresno B Player of the Year. She's got it again after the turnover. Smith turned down the three. Runner in the lane, bounces around and in. Uriah Smith gets on the scoreboard. This is that frenetic pace that Clovis West wants to play at. Turnovers and quick threes. Tomlinson scores again. Timeout called. 30 second timeout called by Coach Dean Young. He wants to talk it over. You made a great point before the tip, Ian. It's not meant to slow you down. It's meant to speed you up. And the Raiders, first, not, first time down, it kind of slowed them up. Then they mm -hmm. got their feet under them, and they found lanes to attack the basket. But then when it starts to get a little bit ragged, the ball's on the floor. And, and that's the, the kind of um, balance you have to find. I mean, you do want to be aggressive and attack when you break the press. But if it's up and down, up and down, that favors Clovis West. So there are times when you want to pull it out, slow it down, and get something good. Raiders led it four to nothing. Now they trail it 10-4. Tomlinson with eight of those 10 points for the Golden Eagles. Raiders get it across the timeline. Hano Hano, who's on into the game now. So the Raider lineup, Piper, Fry, Hanohano, McGee, and Fernandez. Also you see Ramey Chapman into the game, freshman of their own from Clovis West. Good shooter, good scorer. Inside out pass to Chapman. Her three-pointer off the front. Collected by Fernandez. Gets it ahead to Fry. She's fouled here on the near sideline. Checking back in. Justice K. Kaloha. Kiki McGee. Will take a rest. We'll be back in soon, I'm sure. Fry got trapped and fouled. Yeah, you see that half court trap in the corner. Um, you know, Fry doing a good job of, of trying to split it and drawing that foul to get out of that pressure. Mia Fry, bounce pass to Kelly Piper. Scores it underneath. Great look by Mia Fry and finished by Kelly Piper on that one. Chapman, wild drive and shot. Raiders on the run, up ahead to Fry. She'll give it to Callie Piper. Two shots at it. Raiders come away empty. It's a traveling violation. Defended well. Raiders doing a good job so far sticking with their defenders in the half court offense. It's been the points off of turnovers that have brought Clovis West, this four-point lead early in this one. Riley Walls checks into the game for Clovis West. Riley was the Spectrum Impact Player of the game last night for the Golden Eagles. 
in their loss to Sidwell Friends. You know, Riley, she scored seven points. She had a three-pointer, but it wasn't for her scoring. It was all the other things that she was doing against the Quakers last night. All of the hustle plays. Yeah, and you need a player like that. Riley Walls is the glue for this team. You talk a lot about Tomlinson and Smith, but it's Riley Walls that settles them, does the little things, rebounds, defends, and you, every coach wants a player like that. Tomlinson checks back in. She got about 30 seconds of rest. Ball on the ground. Well, the alternating possession, and it'll be Iolani Ball. Kylie chong Key checks in for the Raiders. Yeah, and that's the other thing with this frenetic pace is the use of substitutions. I think both teams do have the luxury of depth on their bench. Clovis West brought 15 players. The Raiders have 11. Medeiros. Defended nicely by Keiki McGee on the closeout. Ball on the floor again. Golden Eagles come away with it. And Medeiros banks that one in for three. Piper. Nice move underneath. Battle for the rebound, won by Chong Ki. Kikau Oha to Fry. And then Mia gets bumped right in front of Coach Craig Campbell. Coach Craig Campbell in his 19th year with Clovis West. 425 wins. Overall, his 30th year of coaching. And he has more than 700 wins. Ian Young, Coach Campbell came into this tournament 706 and 198. Oh man, Incredible. I'm not good at math, but that's almost <laughs> 900 games coached. Yeah. What a coach, what a run, and, and still going um, with the success of this Clovis West ball club. There are actually colleges that emulate his system. Yeah, and you gotta love his intensity. I mean, I think his intensity uh, matches the style of play. Um, but I hear he's an art teacher. Yeah, heard that on television last night. Which must be a nice, relaxing relief, you would think, from the <laughs> frenetic style that's played on the court by Clovis West. I think there's a, there's a line drawn between attention to detail and the things that you do Sure. We talked about the press and yeah. pressing after makes, pressing after um, misses, all that sort of thing. It's all coming from details that you have to, the players have to realize and, and participate yeah. in. It's true. And again, it's a dichotomy. I mean, they play fast, they press, but they're disciplined and they're organized in their sets and they run things well. Like you said, detail oriented. Um, so just super well coached and super successful team out of California. 15 to 6. 70 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Smith works her way into the lane. And the right hand yeah. baby hook. Yeah, fake the spin. <laughs> Going right, came back the other way. Like I said in the pregame, 5 foot 2, but she plays big. Keikaoha sinks a jumper. Justice got four. Big shot there as we close out the quarter. Chapman back to Smith. Driving the lane and getting fouled. Riley Walls. Just the second team foul here in the first quarter for the Raiders. Hey. 
It's a little unusual to see the Iolani Raiders sitting on that side of yeah. the bench. Typically their home spot is on our right and not wearing the home whites. Yeah. It's my first look at the, uh, the red uniforms. Yeah, I They're like very them. Very sharp. 22 seconds to go. Raiders get it across. Fernandez bounce pass to Sake, who banks it in. Marie Sake, the Hawaii State Player of the Year. Yep, her conversion, important one. Cutting it to eight. Five, four, three. Medeiros, long three off the front. And that'll bring a close to the first quarter. Sierra, um, Clovis West, 18, the Iolani Raiders, 10. Let's take a short break and be back with the second quarter. Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. Welcome back to the Lower Gym in the Father Bray Athletic Center on the campus of Yolani School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Hello to all of our viewers around the world, particularly probably in Central California, the Fresno area. Our campus is located just across what is called the Alawai Canal from Waikiki Beach, where all the hotels are, including the Twin Fin, where the uh, Golden Eagles and all the other uh, teams are staying, which is right across the of Waikiki Beach on Kalakaua Avenue near Kapiolani Park. Started the second quarter here. Ramey Chapman. Gives it to Smith. This is Tomlinson. Smith. 20 on the shot clock. It's probably the most deliberate we've seen the Golden Eagles so far this game. Uh, seven on the shot clock. Tomlinson, she'll put it up from 14. Mele Sake battling a couple Golden Eagles for it. Nice defensive stand there by Iolani. For the first time getting a team under the 10 second shot clock mark. Jocelyn Martinez into the game for Clovis West. Also Ariana Reyes. Ball rolls out of bounds. Riley Walls checks back in. Doesn't have to actually check in. She just goes and inbounds the ball right at midcourt. She's got it down low. Nice bounce pass to Reyes. Swatted away, though, by Mele Sake. Great recovery by Mele that time on the nice drop pass, but Mele able to get over and block that shot. Inbounds pass tipped away by Hano Hano. Tomlinson returns the favor, but Fry wins it back. Hano Hano draws the contact in the lane. You see the frequency of the substitutions by Clovis yeah. West. If you play this style, you have to sub um, so their players remain fresh. Fry bounce pass to Sake. Doesn't get there, though. There's a foul called. Ball 
So each team with one personal foul. Each team with one personal foul in this quarter, one team foul in this quarter. And if you're wondering, it got reset. Clovis West committed three personal fouls in the first quarter, Iolani two. And now it's one apiece. If you're wondering how that figures in on shooting fouls, Coach Ian Young will explain next time the ball is dead. The new rule, Riley Walls scores. Yeah, on the new rule uh, for high school, as well as uh, the women on the collegiate level, there is no more one and one bonus on the seventh foul. Instead, every quarter on the fifth foul, you go straight to the double bonus. Sasaki with it. Standing on the line. Chapman with the rebound. Walls. Nice change of direction, but Sake comes over to cut her off. I think the thinking for the new free throw, double bonus rules, and less free throws, less time spent on the line. But possibly puts a wrinkle in some of the strategies used for foul attempts. So that was the second team foul of the quarter for Clovis West. Golden Eagles lead it 20 to 10. Got the Raiders doubled up. And there's the third team foul. Shooting some free throws would likely help Iolani. They've been shooting their foul shots well as of late in the preseason. 62%. Fernandez, this is Hano Hano, cross court pass to Keikau Oha, open look from three, and just as Keikau Oha sinks it, she's got seven. Much needed three for the Raiders. As soon as Justice comes back in, she declares her presence. Nice skip pass over the top to Keikau Oha, who is in rhythm, catch and shoot. What's really impressive about Justice Keika Oha, Oha as well is her ability to defend. Just a freshman, but physically she's able to defend and, and handle the ball and really do everything on the court. As a freshman, she stepped right into this starting lineup and right into this high scoring role for the Raiders. So the scoreboard tells us that Clovis West has three team fouls and Iolani two right now. There's five minutes to go in the second quarter. That's how the first quarter ended after eight minutes. Yeah. So we're kind of on pace what would normally be, but that's because the fouls were low in the first quarter. And that won't always be the case. Yeah, might come into play in the second quarter as we see the turnover and Callie Piper on the finish. Making it a six point ball game. Pressure in the backcourt, applied by Kikaoha. Making Smith work a little bit more than usual. This is Tomlinson, spins in the lane, fouls after this shot. A nifty spin move, and in that first night against Kahuku, Clovis West. Tomlinson showed the whole bag of tricks, um, the craftiness and the ability to score around the rim. High arch and free throw could not have been better. Last year, Tomlinson averaged 14.6 points per game. She hit 71 three-pointers last season. Average 2.7 assists, 2.5 steals. Sinks both of her free throws there. She's into double fingers now, 10 points. She scored 20 against Kailua, excuse me, Kahuku. And eight against Sidwell Friends last night. Stolen away by Smith. Hands it off to Tomlinson. 
Rebound by Fry. Here comes the double team. Oh, really aggressive <laughs> contact there by Smith, who kind of gives the shrug to the bench. Fourth team foul for Clovis West. Next time they do that, it'll be two shots for the Raiders. Kiki McGee feeds Fernandez for three. Haley Fernandez, the sophomore, sinks a three, cuts the lead to five. Three and a half to go here until halftime. Tomlinson, the step and a half move. Yeah, so strong and so um, in control of her body on these shots. Tomlinson, great finish. Fernandez gets it to Keiko Oha. Back to Fernandez. 15 on the shot clock. Haley open for three. Top of the key. Why not? Two in a row for the sophomore. Cuts the lead to four. Yeah, this game seems right up Haley Fernandez Alley. <laughs> the up and down pace, the shooting threes. And right back comes Clovis West. The Raiders, Piper, inside out pass to kick out Oha. Tomlinson hangs and hits. Tina Tomlinson has 14 here in the first half. Haley Fernandez for three. Three triples in a row for Haley Fernandez. She's got the hot hand. And hitting it from all different areas around the arc. That's Haley's 12th three-pointer of the preseason, her fourth in the Yelani Prep Basketball Classic. I think they're trying to figure out where the when, where and when the foul occurred. The shot was good and should count, but the foul recipient was Callie Piper, and she's on the line now to, I believe, shoot one shot. Oh, she's going to shoot two. Did they wave off the three? Three-pointer made. <laughs> Foul away from the ball, 15 foul. So Piper shoots two. This is the first. Th this might be a new modification of the rule because on the fifth foul, now she gets two, two free throws. Uh, I, I'm not clear on the rule where you get the N one on the free throw, but yeah, it looks like she gets two and knocks down the second of the two. Makes it a two-point game, 29-27. Tina Tomlinson, a long three. Cardo Wechi, our man on the spot. Uh, maybe check in with Coach Dean over there if he um, on that on that ruling. Is that a three-pointer made and then a foul away from the ball? And so it's just an additional two points. Mia Fry at the line. She makes her free throw. So they got the two free throws because there's a double bonus and it was after the shot. So that's why they got the two free throws there. So the make three, fall away from the ball, well, fall away from the shooter. But on the court, So that was a four-point trip for the Raiders. One of the most uh, unusual four-point trips down the court <laughs> that you'll ever see. 
Ibarra gets two points back. Could have been the very rare five point play. <laughs> yeah. And now Kika Oha gets called for a player control foul. So yeah, good point, Ian. That would be kind of a possession-ish, but that might have been the first five point possession <laughs> um, here in the lower gym <laughs> that if yes. Cali Piper had hit both. <laughs> Good news for the Raiders, though. And also a offensive foul on Clovis West. A minute to go here until halftime. The Raiders down by just two points, 31-29. Kekaoha pops in the lane. She's got 11. This game is tied up. 45 on the game clock, 30 on the shot clock. Tomlinson working against Fernandez. Goes into the lane, is greeted by three Raiders. One of them will be called for the foul. They're calling that on Kekaoha. That is Justice's second personal foul. Fifth team foul. Now Tomlinson will shoot a pair. And looks like they'll get Justice out of the game so she doesn't pick up that third foul going into the halftime break. Kanoe Hanohano also has two personal fouls for Iolani. Tomlinson makes one of two. Mia Fry circling back, 25 to go. Ball stolen away momentarily. But then Jocelyn Martinez stepped on the line. When you play against Clovis West, it makes it very hard to play for the last shot. They'll force you to do something with it. Fernandez gets out of trouble, but the Raiders turn it over. Fernandez with the interception. The no-look dish to Mele Sake, who hits the layup. Raiders lead at 33-32. Desperation shot by Smith. So after the first half of play, the Raiders lead it 33 to 32. Helped along by that four point possession and some fortunate ball handling. Uh, Iolani scored the first four points in this game. Then all of a sudden the pressure kind of got to them. Then it was, they were trailing at 10 to four. Yeah. Went back and forth. The foul shots helped. The three-pointers help from Haley Fernandez, Keiko Oha. Wow. Yeah, great <laughs> entertaining first half, and great job by the Raiders um, getting back into this game. And like you said, the three-point shooting by Haley Fernandez. Um, it seems like certain games are made for certain players, and this game certainly um, seems to fit Haley Fernandez's skill set. Um, but it's been the steadiness and the scoring of Justice Keiko Oha uh, with 11 points in that first half. Justice leads all the Raiders with those 11. She hit one three-pointer. Haley Fernandez hit three. She hit them all in a row. She hit them all in the second quarter. Also on the scorebook for the Raiders is Callie Piper with five, Meli Sake with four, Mia Fry with three. For the Golden West, excuse me, Clovis West Golden Eagles. You know why I keep saying that? I said that a couple times because there's a, there's a, uh, there's a Golden West Community College in okay. Orange County yeah. where I used to work by. It does flow, yes. <laughs> the Clovis West Golden Eagles from Fresno, California. They are led by Athena Tomlinson who scored 15 wow. points. If there are any Boston College 
Golden Eagle fans out there. Um, she is headed your way. You got a good one. Her backcourt mate, Uriah Smith. She's got four. Keegan Medeiros, the sharpshooter. She's hit a triple. But they trail it. 33-32. John Tamanaha here with Ian Young at the broadcast position. We have Carter Uechi roaming the gym with our wireless mic setup. You mentioned Athena Tomlinson and her scoring in the first half. She's going to be competing in the yes. Alakai Executive Search three point contest. Which will, as it looks like, we might have Carter getting ready for something over there. Yeah, I'm down here. I'm with Abby Tanaka. She was on the varsity team for four years. She got to play in the Classic three out of the four years, I believe. What was your experience like playing in the Classic? Um, I mean, it's always a big deal playing against all like the good mainland teams and um, playing in front of a big crowd. And I don't know, it's just like having fun, but also just taking this as like a learning moment and being able to just play against mainland girls. What's harder, doing the scorebook or knocking down a three during the Classic? <laughs> <laughs> knocking down a three at the Classic. There's something else you can ask her what's harder. Um, she does what you do, Carter. She did that during the game you were playing in, the senior faculty basketball game. She was my broadcast partner. Ask her about that. They want to know about your experience <laughs> behind the mic during the senior versus faculty game. Um, it was nerve-wracking, but I was with my uncle, so... <laughs> It made it a little more chill, I guess, but I struggle with like, finding things to say about my <laughs> classmates, so yeah. Abby did a good job. So who was your most favorite opponent, or the game you mem remember the most from playing in the Classic? Who do you remember playing against? Um, I remember my junior year against Archbishop Mitty. Um, I don't know, I remember like that was a really big crowd, and I remember like, hitting a three in the beginning of the game. I don't know, I kind of got chills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perfect, I'll send it back to you, John. Thank you, Abby, thank you, Carter. Abby Tanaka, probably one of the my two favorite uh, Raiders of all time. Oh yeah. Ren Tanaka, Abby Tanaka, my niece and nephew. <laughs> Great player. <laughs> uh, Abby Tanaka last year, uh, she made Iolani, she made the state of Hawaii, she made our family proud. She made it to the finals of the Alakai Executive Search three-point shootout. That's right. It went into sudden death overtime. She finished as the runner-up. That was a special moment. Today, in the, the 2003 Alakai Executive Search three-point contest, the eight contestants will be, and this will follow this game right here at about 5.15. We will keep the cameras rolling and you can check that out before we turn everything over to OC16. They will also broadcast the three point shootout. So you probably, you know, you can have your choice. I, I would watch it there. <laughs> um, but those on the mainland and around the world, you can tune in and watch your competitors through this YouTube stream. For Clovis West, it'll be Athena Tomlinson. For Kamehameha Kapalama, Alohi Kandaya. For the Ilani Raiders, it'll be Mele Sake, that guard laden lineup, but it'll be the center. Mele Sake, who will represent the Raiders. For Kailua, it'll be Kiani Ho'olulu. And for Kohuku, it will be Tai Lele Wailiava. For Campbell, it will be Jaina Lynn Sotelo. For Sierra Canyon, Christy Reynoso. And for Sidwell Friends, it will be Ava Yoon. It's always interesting to see. But before that, we've got a second half to play. 
And so speaking of YouTube, it's time now to send the link to your friends. <laughs> Upset alert. The Raiders lead Sierra Canyon by just a point. Sierra Canyon last year finished the campaign ranked 21, 21st in the 2023 Max Preps final poll. They are the defending CIF Central Section Division I champions. The Golden Eagles have won, brace yourself for this statistic, 18 consecutive league titles and 13 straight CIF section championships. In total, they've won 23 CIF section championships, 14 under Coach Campbell's. So in his 18 previous seasons, he's won the CIF section 14 times. This is a program of, of girls uh, high school basketball to, to really admire. Um, this is their fourth appearance in the Yolani Prep Classic in 2009. In their first appearance, they finished fourth. In 2016, they lost to Archbishop Mitty in the final. That's that same team that Abby Tanaka just mentioned. That's a really top-notch California team out of the Bay Area. And then in 2018, the Golden Eagles finished third. In their third place game, they beat the Iolani Raiders. So this is a rematch of that game. When you look at the Raiders side of the street, this is the 16th appearance for the Raiders in their home tournament. They are currently 16 and 31 in it. In the 15 previous appearances, they finished fourth 10 times. Their best finish came in 2019, finishing third. Abby remembers that game. Lost to Modern Day in the semifinals, 60 to 57. Then they beat South Medford, a really good program out of Oregon for third place. That was in 2019. The Raiders would go on to win the state championship in 2019, beginning a run of four in a row, also winning in 2020. 2021 state tournament was wiped out due to the pandemic. And then the Raiders won it again in 2022 and 2023. Two of the teams that were in the, what you call the uh, the final four in division one here in the state of Hawaii, Campbell and Kamehameha Kapalama, they will play in the next game for That's the consolation title. Well. Yeah. John, I'm, I'm here with uh, Megan down here on this baseline. I just wanted to know how many bodies it takes. We have other sports going on at Iolani. You have to be here all day watching the game. So what does it take from you guys to do that? It takes a lot of training staff, and we're really blessed to have many part-timers and full-timers. How many ankles do you have to tape a day? <laughs> Just for Carter, 15. So seven and a half bodies she has to tape ankles for. But back to you, John. Shout out all, to all the trainers and support staff and volunteers and sponsors who make this tournament possible and so special. Thank you, Megan and company. Thank you, Carter. Tina Tomlinson with it. What a quick move into the lane and she scores with the left hand. She's got 17 points. Stolen away. Lay it up and in, Riley Walls. So just like that, Clovis West puts its stamp on the second half. That is Justice Kekaoha's third personal foul. We are just 34 seconds into the third quarter. That is cause for concern. Sake rebounds the missed free throw. More contact here, foul call. Uh, walls. K. 
Keiko Oha. That's her inbound pass intercepted by Walls. Bounce pass to Smith. And not the start that the Raiders wanted. Clovis West shot out of the cannon from this start with the intensity. You had them walking out kind of late. Um, they didn't take much of a warm up at halftime. So I think Coach Campbell really wanted them to come out of this halftime break into the second half with the intensity. to turn this game around. Raiders trailing it by five. <laughs> Push off foul. That's Justice Keiko Oha's fourth wow. personal foul. She picked up two in the second quarter, two here in the third. Heads to the bench. Tomlinson. They work the ball around and find Jordan Ibarra underneath. Yeah, and that's Riley Walls, and that's where you see her. I mean, in the start of this second half, Riley Walls has been everywhere, the focal point of this run. Coach Dean Young wants to get his Raiders settled. As we said in the pregame, he's looking for composure. It's probably one of the words he's using now during this 30 second timeout. Coming up after this one for the consolation title, Kamehameha Kapalama Warriors against the Campbell Savers. That'll be at about six o'clock, Hawaii time on Spectrum OC 16. And then in the championship final, Sidwell Friends out of Washington, D.C. against Sierra Canyon from Chatsworth, California. That one will chip off at approximately 7.30. Hawaii time, televised on Spectrum OC 16 and on radio, CBS 1500. Those of you on the mainland can get CBS 1500 via their website. 10 second violation, and the proof is in the shot clock. That's right. It says 24. Whistle came with 11 seconds. You only get 10 to cross midcourt. Clovis West. Looking to extend its seven point lead. Jaros misses the put back go up and in for Ibarra. Jordan's got six in this game. Ball knocked away. Medeiros. McGee with the rebound. Raiders having trouble getting it out of yeah. the back court though. And Tomlinson chases down the loose ball. That full court pressure, even off of a miss. Tomlinson from 12. She's got 19 points. Raiders really struggling yeah. now with the pressure. I think they're going to get Smith um, on that loose ball. She kind of dove on Mia Fry. It is indeed called on Uriah Smith. Her third personal foul. Sometimes they let anything go on those loose balls, dive on the floor, but I don't think you can jump on a player. <laughs> Two team fouls for each side. Great move. That was Keiki McGee. Yeah, much needed bucket by Keiki McGee showing her senior leadership. Traveling, ball turned over to Iolani. They smartly inbound the ball before the Clovis West press got set up fully. But the Raiders can't take advantage. 
Golden Eagles with it. Under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Fry with another rebound. Looking for help. She gets pushed by Smith with the body. Smith saying she had her hand straight up. She has a point. Coach Campbell calls a 30 second timeout. On that last play you saw on the miss, Mia Fry got the rebound. And normally on the rebound, you know, you, you'll get into your transition. It's very unusual to have to set up in your press breaker off of a miss. And so that time you saw some of the Raider players running down, you know, thinking it was a secured rebound. Um, but it's Clovis West. And Clovis West, they get right into their 2 2 1 full court press. Um, the pressure comes. They'll press on a make, on a miss, on a made free throw, on a missed free throw. On a sideline out of bounds, they'll pressure each and every time, so you gotta be ready for it. 44 35. Clovis West out in front. McGee. Just chaos out there. Jump ball. Raiders will retain possession on the alternating arrow. You can hear the Clovis West yeah. bench calling for trap, trap. Kelly Fernandez did a good job of recognizing that trap coming, getting it and centering it to Mia Fry. Fernandez in the backcourt. Permitter passing for Iolani. Cross court to stepping out of bounds. Callie Piper. Almost halfway hit through the third quarter here. Raiders have just scored two points here in this frame after leading it 33-32 at halftime. Pass up ahead to Piper. That one spins off the rim. Tomlinson. Chapman, the freshman with a three-pointer. Yeah, she can knock it down. Chapman is a great shooter from three. Only a freshman. One of two freshmen here for Clovis West. Another turnover for Iolani. Tomlinson will slow it down a bit. Now attacks, kicks, ball rotation. Warren's three-pointer is off. Bodies are hitting the floor hard. A pushing foul called. Martinez. Checks back in for Clovis West. Sake back in for Iolani. Along with Kylie Chong Ki. With that team foul situation, it'll be two shots given to Mia Fry. Yeah, and with three minutes and three seconds remaining in this quarter, let's see if the Raiders can take advantage of this. Um, be aggressive, draw fouls, and get to the free throw line and knock down those free throws. 
kind of missed the one and one. I gotta <laughs> be honest. It's a crucial first yeah. first veto. Just like I know. Fry earned the second and he hit the it, second. It is true. All free throws are not created equal. The front end of the one and one. That's very crucial. Very true. This is Warren to Medeiros. Chapman. Medeiros got to get out to her. Her three pointer is off the mark and Sake with the rebound. Send her back to the line for two free throws. Nia Reyes, whistle for the foul. Meli Sake to the line for Iolani. This is just her seventh game of the preseason. Still recovering from the knee injury. You see the big brace on her right knee. Last year, she averaged 8.5 points per game. Hit six three-pointers. She'll be in the three-point contest after this game. That free throw does not go for Mele. Tina Tomlinson. One of the top players here in this tournament. Ball goes out of bounds. Opportunity for the Raiders. Yeah, great stop by the Raiders that time. Gaining some momentum, trying to get back into this game down nine. McGee, back to Fernandez. They get it over. McGee's trapped, somehow gets it to Fry. Bounce past the Sake inside. Nelly gets her own rebound. Knocked away from her. Bodies hit the floor. Another jump ball, this time it points in favor of the Golden Eagles. Clovis West leading it by nine, under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Hickey McGee does it all. She even <laughs> wipes the floor with the yeah. fancy Yelani Classic floor wiper. Senior leadership right there. Where's those Iolani students when you need them, those <laughs> sixth and seventh graders? Chapman in the backcourt, being guarded by Chong Ki. <laughs> Not sure what's happening yeah. here. Uh, Whistle and now the two officials, two of the three, will converse. John, so I think the shot clock mm. started at 25. So they didn't get the full reset, so they are going to start it again. Thank you, Carter. Our man on the scene down there in the corner, Carter Uwechi. Ian Young up here with me, John Tamanaha. Thanks for joining us on Iolani Live. Tomlinson stops and pops in the lane and rolls over the front of the rim. She's got 21 unofficially. Oh, she's so tough and look at her running back on defense. She's such a talented player. Um, speedy quick but also under control. The 65th ranked player in the nation by ESPNW. Chong Ki for three. Chapman with the rebound. Maybe Chapman's still with it. Tomlinson. Holds up the fist play. Holds up from 16, in and out. All poked out of bounds by Clovis West. 105 to go, third quarter. Raiders trail it by 11, long pass ahead. 
too tall for McGee. Kanoe Hanohano checks back in for Iolani, one of three seniors on this Raider squad. Tomlinson guarded by McGee. Step back jumper, yeah. pure. And I'm not sure if this is by design, but it seems like they're going a lot of ISO with Tomlinson, and for good reason. She's been very successful. Taking her defender off the dribble. Warren tips that one out of bounds. Raiders just five points here in the third quarter. Looking to get something started. Opportunity here. Sake on the baseline. Clovis West on the run. Nine point eight seconds to go here in the third quarter. McGee up to Fry. She'll attack the rim, gets it off the glass. No good, but she'll go to the line to shoot two with four point five seconds to go. Mia Fry at 64% foul shooter here in the preseason. Six to first. Scored a team high 10 points against Sierra Canyon last night. She's up to seven here. Looks like Anahano has a contact out. Tomlinson for three, just misses. So after three quarters of play, Clovis West 51, Iolani 40. The fourth quarter to come. We will take a break and be back to the 2023 Iolani Prep Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. Back here in the lower gym for the third place game of the 2023 Iolani Prep Basketball Classic. Clovis West leading Iolani 51 to 40. Hawaii Pacific Health, our title sponsor here this year. And while we have the time, we'd like to recognize some of our other generous tournament sponsors, such as the Twin Fin. That's the hotel in Waikiki that all of the visiting teams stay at. Nike, of course. Alakai Executive Search, which sponsors the slam dunk contest in the boys' tournament and the three-point shoot-off challenge, which is coming up after this game. First Hawaiian Bank, Pest Tech Hawaii, Kahala, Roberts Hawaii, Physiotherapy, Sodexo, Waiakea Water, DTL, Tiki's Grill and Bar. That's just a portion of our tournament sponsors. Mahalo to all of them. They make this great tournament possible. Fourth quarter starts the way the third quarter and the whole game is gone. Lots of pressure. They're forcing another Raider turnover. This Clovis West defense. Coach Ian Young yeah. is relentless. <laughs> yes. And what I want to see, it's going to be interesting how long Coach Dean Young waits to put Justice K 
Keikau Oha back into the game, the Raiders' leading scorer and freshman. Um, she has four fouls. So with 7.36 in this fourth, um, at some point down 11, Coach Dean Young will look to get Justice back in. I'm just not sure when that will be. Justice picked up two fouls in the second quarter and then three in the third. Tomlinson gets knocked to the floor by Kanoe Hanohano. Riley Walls and Uriah Smith check back in for Clovis West. Fifty-one to forty, just under seven and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. These two teams fighting for third place in the Yolani Classic. And if you look through the program at the teams that have finished third, it's a pretty good list. Um, it's a prestigious tournament, year in, year out, since 2007. The Raiders are on that list, having done that once in 2019. And Clovis West is on that list, having beaten the Raiders in this game in 2018. <laughs> Gonna get Callie Piper for the foul. <laughs> the, the substitutions, Chapman and Warren, they just keep coming. Fresh players in off the bench for Clovis West. Yeah, quick substitutions, frequent substitutions, with not a lot of drop-off between their players. They all seem to be able to score and trap. Raiders on the run this time. Madero saves it from going out of bounds. But then goes out of bounds along the sideline. Lots of time for the Raiders yeah. to put something together. As Coach Young was looking for, they need some composure, work together. Kiki McGee for three. Rebound to Chapman. Tina Tomlinson. Another runner in the lane. Another foul. They're gonna get Haley Fernandez for the personal foul. Fourth team foul of the fourth quarter. And we're 6-18 in. That was quick. Next time the Raiders commit a personal foul, the Golden Eagles will go to the line to shoot two. High arching shot by Tomlinson. Yeah, Tomlinson sold that one. Not much contact there. Um, but her ability to drive the lane, get penetration, and hit these hanging shots, you almost have to contest every time. Tomlinson hits the second. She has scored well over 1,100 points in her Clovis West career. 450 of them yeah. last season. And counting. We see the pressure and the 10-second violation. That's one thing about that shot clock. It's non-controversial, you know. Back in the day, which is like right. three years ago, it'd That's be right. like, hey, you got a quick count. <laughs> and I think there was a point of emphasis that the referees are supposed to go off of that clock mm. uh, in determining that 10-second violation. And we have Justice back into the game. 
with 5.55 left in the fourth quarter. Tomlinson, who's guarded by Fernandez. This is Warren. Back to Tomlinson. Hika Oha fighting for the ball in the lane. Another jump ball, held ball. And now Kelly Piper. Will help mop up the perspiration on the floor. Before Medeiros inbounds it with her team up a dozen. Five and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Medeiros on the left block. Banks it in. Usually she's beyond the arc. That time she was on the block. Now it's Piper down low on the other end. She will go to the line to shoot two. Fouled in the act of shooting. You get Riley Walls with a personal foul. Just the first team foul on Clovis West here in the fourth quarter. Three fresh players in for Clovis West. If it were a closer game, that five foul bo new bonus rule does come into play where if in this scenario where Iolani only has one foul um, and then has to foul to try to get back into the game and put Clovis West on the free throw line, it's now instead of that one and one opportunity, yeah. two shots. So it changes the strategy a little bit. It's gonna take some getting used to. Tomlin said, shifty moves. Has it in the corner. Three pointer just rips through the net. Yeah, kind of looked like Steph Curry there where it's just active movement. And all that action is really just to set up Tomlinson for that three. Thirty second timeout called by Clovis West. Golden Eagles lead it by 16 with 434 to go here in the fourth quarter. Coming up next after this game, the Alakai Executive Search three-point contest will be held. All eight teams will have a representative in the shootout. Last year's one went down into a uh, sudden death shootout tiebreaker. Stick around after this, we'll try and bring that one to you. Then the final two games will be Broadcast on OC16. Is Felipe Ohastro back? Have you seen him? I have not as of yet. Mm. Lost his voice last night. Dean Shimamoto had to go it alone. Yeah, and I see Dean over there as well as Tom Yoshida. There's the uh, 25 on the clock again. Inbound to Fernandez. This is McGee. Trap comes. Kiki moves away. Haley Fernandez, long three-pointer. Rebound collected by Smith. Keegan Medeiros dishes it back to Warren. She'll attack and kick it outside the arc to Medeiros. McGee with the rebound, off and running. Up ahead to Piper. 
She tried to get it to kick out Oha, but it goes out of bounds. Fifty-seven forty-one. Clovis West looking to wrap up third place here in the Eelani Classic. Athena Tomlinson. I'm going to take a wild guess. She will be on the all-tournament team. Very prestigious list of players over the years. I have her with 27 points unofficially in this game. She's got the ball now. Gets past the double team, finds Medeiros in the right corner for a three. Keegan's in double figures. Her second three-pointer. This is McGee, Fry. Mia lays it off to Callie Piper. She has a shot blocked by Zion Williams, one of those two freshmen on the Clovis West team. Mele Sake back in for Iolani. Kick out to Williams. Rebound kick out Oha. McGee to Fernandez. Stop and pop. Haley doesn't hit. Ball goes out of bounds. Off a of Golden Eagle. And this inbound lob to Fry in the lane. Sake had it knocked away. Tomlinson pulls up behind the arc. McGee up ahead to Fernandez. Wow, there's going to be a lot of bumps and bruises on the flight <laughs> yes. back yes. at home here in Hawaii. Get the ice packs ready. <laughs> Some players hitting the court hard. Both teams giving it their all. One player that always does that is the senior, Keiki McGee. Yeah. Last night on the radio, we uh, gave her the PVT Land Company Sportsmanship Award for just kind of playing all the way to the end. Um, and when in this prep classic, we're talking about Zach Randolph's daughter. We're talking about Gilbert Arenas' daughter. There's Khalil McGee's daughter is out yeah, here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> who, yeah. who was a, a tremendous player at University Lab School in his high school days and then across the street at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, Ian Young, you... you you experienced yeah, yeah, Kalia yeah, we had to and match what, up what against he Kalia, was all about. Terrific player, and, and, and really dad. the whole strategy uh, to try to contain Kalia McGee was to box in one, and we'd have multiple um, teammates of ours kind of take that role on. Um, and well, he, he had, he'd he still get his. Yeah, we had the box in one, <laughs> and so that was one of my roles. Uh, I know my classmate Mark Watanabe, that was one of his roles to just stick with Kalia, don't let him get the ball. <laughs> and then I think he'd still go off for like 20 plus points. Tremendous player. See him here in the gym. Very near Kiki at this point, actually. Kiki's got it. Bounce pass over to Hano Hano. Chapman slows it down. Gives it to Tomlinson. Getting near the two minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Clovis West in charge, leading it by 19. Williams three rattles out. Kanoi Hanohano tracks it down. Kekaoha on the run, Raiders have numbers. It does not fall. It's a Chapman. Ramey drives the lane. Hano Hano with the rebound. Oh my. Smith made contact with McGee. And then Chapman was coming up court. 
And hit Kiki McGee from the other side, but Kiki's up quickly. That's good to see. Those were two hard shots within a split second. Didn't need to wipe the court where all of that took place. Haley Fernandez brings out the device. Haley hit a trio of triples back in the second quarter. I think Clovis West started to close that down a little bit. Yeah. I know she had one shot opportunity in the second half, but um, has been quiet and, and hasn't, hasn't had the opportunities that she had in the first half to um, actually get the Raiders ahead by a point uh, late in that first half. Kevin Hano Hano can't finish on the Raider end. Tomlinson. And Darryl's back to Athena. Tomlinson, a long three. No good. Kikaoha on the run. Slips near midcourt. Some concern for Justice, but she seems to be moving fairly well. Battling for that rebound down there. Wow, what a physical, hard-fought game this has been. Somewhat chaotic at times. But both teams going at it with everything they've got. Hanohano gets cut off at the baseline. Golden Eagles were out of bounds. 36 seconds to go in this one. Coach Campbell coaching until the final seconds. You can hear him in our microphones. Good to see both teams still getting after it, diving on the floor for loose balls. But with that comes a lot of perspiration on the court. Got that taken care of. Chapman in the backcourt. Shot clock is off, so they can't look for that 24. Clovis West gets it across. To number 24, Zion Williams. Tina Tomlinson. Dribbling out the final seconds here. And Clovis West from Fresno, California, finishes third here in the Ilani Prep Basketball Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health with a 60 to 41 victory over the host school, the Ilani Raiders, the four time defending league and state champions here in Hawaii. Congratulations to the Golden Eagles. This is their fourth visit and they have finished third in the tournament twice and the runner up once. Always enjoy seeing Clovis West here in the lower gym. On the other side, it's the Iolani Raiders who get to experience play against the second 
team from California that they played Sierra Canyon last night and Clovis West here, and they they learned from that. Um, and not only that, you know, if you see Coach Mike Among leaving the, the gym, his intermediate black team, they were going to practice today, and they shot at halftime, but yeah. what they did was they came in and they watched this game. Right. Um, and the thought was to look at Clovis West in particular and see their, their dedication to defense, all of the different things that they do, the variety yeah. of things, the style of play. I think all of us, we look at that, as players, coaches, fans, and, and can take something from it. And so there's, it's not just the players on the court, that intermediate block, they got a big game coming up against Kamehameha. If they win that one, they possibly play Punahou for the, for the intermediate ILH championship. But it's all those small things, Ian, and that's what Coach Young was trying to establish when 40 years ago, he took his eventual state champions, the first of the many state champions you look at all the banners around the uh, the lower gym here but that was the beginning the 1983 Illini Raiders Red Raiders at the time went to Las Vegas and they thought they were something they were the <laughs> they would become the state champions but when they went to Las Vegas they <laughs> they ran into a wall they ran into some some things like you saw here from Clovis West but the teams that they came up against were St. Bernard from Los Angeles and West Philadelphia from Pennsylvania. And uh, it was a learning experience for that team. And Coach Young thought, wow, you know, Hawaii teams, Hawaii players and coaches, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot out there. Remember, this is 40 years ago. This is not, this is before travel ball and a lot of these tournaments and whatnot. And thought, well, maybe it would be easier, and it is, to have teams come here and host what is now a 16-team tournament on the boys' side, an eight-team tournament on the girls' side, and have the Hawaii teams experience it here in Hawaii. And that is the birth of the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic, and you, you see it happening every day. Yeah, and I like what you said about that ripple effect of Coach Young's legacy um, to these up-and-coming players watching, these guys seeing these great teams and seeing Iolani battle it out with these great teams. I mean, it's making a huge impact, but also to the past players and their influence and in training players and in coaching players. I mean, you just cannot put into value how this tournament has impacted Hawaii basketball. Absolutely right. And then little things get added along the way. I think from the very beginning, um, I was a young man back in the day here at Yelani School. The slam dunk contest was uh, was part of it, and the yeah. slam dunks would happen in warm-ups. And uh, you would, you didn't come late to the game because if West Philadelphia was warming up <laughs> <laughs> in those wild warm-up outfits that they had and doing their dunks, uh, that was really special. And there was a slam dunk contest over the years. Um, that's something yeah. that people really look forward to. Yeah, I remember it fondly um, when I was in the seventh grade, and I can remember right over here on this diamond head basket, sitting underneath the basket. Um, the stage, right? Yeah, and sitting with my, my friend, the late great Kai Machida. Mm. And just our eyes were huge watching <laughs> these players um, throw it off the back wall and uh, jumping over people, jumping over ball racks. Um, just so many fond memories of both the dunk contest and now this three-point contest. Yeah, so now it's been expanded and in the last couple of years we've had the three-point shootout. Also, both of them are sponsored by Alaka'i Executive Search. Many thanks to them. So John, I have Abby Tanaka. I brought her back because of that three-point shootout. Yeah. I wanted to talk to her about her experience last year and what uh, she thought of the contest. Um, I was really nervous. <laughs> I couldn't really breathe when I was shooting, um, but I was just trying to have fun. So um, did you actually know the rules when it first started? I knew like the basic rules of the first round, and then when I got into the tie with another girl, I didn't know the rules. So. <laughs> No, I don't think anybody did, uh, Carter. I think they had to make it up. Okay, they're tied. Shoot more. 
<laughs> so what was your strategy for the three-point contest going into it? And then what do you think the best strategy is? Melee is going to be representing Iolani. What do you think, what would be your advice to the shooters that are in this contest? Um, you just have to like pace yourself because like there's five spots. And so, I don't know, you just have to pace yourself and not go like too fast in the beginning and check the time. Perfect. You heard the strategy right there, John. Yeah. You can do it now. <laughs> Back to oh, you. Yeah. Then you got the money ball, right, at the end of the rack. Yeah, so is it a money ball um, on the fifth shot? There's a different is it five spots? ball out there, yeah. yeah. Um, if it is like the NBA, and, and there's been all these adjustments to these rules, um, the first four shots, although now they let you choose where you want the money ball to go either first or, or third and, that right? and there's even been modifications in the three-point <laughs> shootout for the nba side where they have a whole rack of money balls. so many uh modifications but it'll be interesting to see what the rules are for this one but we do see the money ball out there we see the racks out there uh what abby tanaka said about pacing and i think controlling your breath through the, these shots because you're going to have to put up a lot of shots in multiple rounds if you go all the way um, and also style of shooting is important. Sometimes you see the jump shooters mm. not be of, as effective in these three-point competitions. Yeah. They're more of a game shooter. They, they jump higher, but they cannot get as many shots off in the time allotted. Um, so that being said, I think Ava Yoon uh, from Sidwell Friends, I think has a really good, efficient shot that she can just grab from the rack uh, and and take her yeah. shot, but a lot of good shooters we see out here as as they warm up for this one. You see here over here. Thank you, Zach, for that shot. The girl here on the near part of the art in the uh, white T-shirt. Look at that stroke from Sidwell Friends. Eva Yoon will be their representative from Sierra Canyon. Christy Reynoso. For the Campbell Savers, it'll be Jaina Lynn Sotelo for Kahuku. It'll be Tailele Wiley Ava for Kailua. It'll be Kiani Ho'olulu for Iolani. It'll be Mele Sake for Kamehameha Schools Kapa Lama. It'll be Alohi Kandaya. And for Clovis West, we saw a lot of her in the game that just concluded. Athena Tomlinson. Athena Tomlinson, I have her with 27 total points. She started off with two threes in the first quarter. Didn't hit any more threes, but certainly uh, had her impact on the game. Offensively, defensively, in transition, in leadership, in every way possible. Yeah, and Athena Tomlinson, I mean, she might be considered a uh, game time shooter. Um, so we'll see which we'll see which style um, is effective. Um, Mele Sake, you have to say, is a dark horse pick. I mean, um, there's a lot of great shooters on that Iolani Raiders squad, but Mele Sake, she's shown her touch on the free throw line, and she can shoot the three-point shot. So she will compete as well. So I found out that there's another dark horse in this competition, right. and it's Lohi Candia. She won the Imua Invitational's three-point shootout oh, yeah. last weekend. So <laughs> I was just talking yeah. to Coach Pua Strain, and she said that's why she's representing Kamehameha, and she's looking to go two for two yeah. in winning the shootout. Yeah, and we see her over here warming up. And, um, you know, with minimal effort, she's just um, have an effortless stroke and a nice stroke. So, yeah, I like it. Coach Ian, you're one, one's a good one to talk to about this. You were a sharp shooter in your day, maybe still. Yeah, and I kind of kind of wish I lived in this era <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't uh, shoot as many threes as they shoot now. Um, but yes, I was able to shoot some three-point shots. Um, I did play at Whittier uh, after Iolani, and luckily I had a coach that had just come from Italy. So we kind of had the green light to shoot threes, uh, which was fun. Um, but yeah, shooting threes back then wasn't the same as it is now. On, on a fast break, you know, we'd go in for the layup, but now on a fast <laughs> break, they spot up and shoot threes. So 
It's got to be a fun time to play as a, as a, as a ball player and as a three-point shooter. I'm so old. You know, I'm from back in the day when the Classic first started and I was in high school, but we didn't have the arc. Can you believe that? <laughs> no, yes, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, we could no shoot from the top points. of the key, and, yeah. you know, that was far, but you didn't, Right. as far as markings on the court. Yeah, but, um, yeah. And you think about some of those great shooters, um, Pistol Pete Maravich, Bill Bradley, who played without the yeah. three-point line. What would their scoring percentage or, 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 or point per game look like had they had a three-point line in their era. Another thing that might come into play if you, and it looks like we are gonna use these ball racks, is as a shooter, do you put it on your right side and grab the ball off the rack off the right to go into your shot, or do you have it on your left side? And it's a little bit different than receiving a pass and going into your shot shooting off of the ball rack you know it's something interesting we just saw on our camera kyle brought over the uh, money ball which probably yeah. has a different feel so yeah we got some shooters here on the eva end the contest will be competed here on the diamond head end so i was just thinking about wow i would like to shoot at the goal that the competition is going to yeah, be at that's true. But, but but these girls are, are much better shooters than i so <laughs> they're probably finding their range but the ball difference is an issue as well yeah, for these girls, is it, you know, is it, is it 10 feet? Do I have a ball? Okay, let's get it on. Public address announcer here in the lower gym, Kyle Miyamoto. Well. After the final four shooters go to their first round shots, calculate the score, then come out with whoever is participating in the championship round. This will be the top four scores of the original eight participants. We see Tylele Williams. Maybe if maybe yeah. we could also get Carter to kind of audibleize what the uh, what the format and yeah. the rules are. I know Kyle just gave out some information, but Carl. Carter, do you know kind of how what the format and how it unfolds? I didn't get the rules yet, but I got the three-point <laughs> contest champion trophy wow, presented trophy. by Alaka'i Executive Search. And I'm also wearing a Kahala shirt because Kahala is one of our sponsors as well. Yep. So shout out to both of them for sponsoring the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic. You could have uh, made it a trio. Are you wearing Nikes? <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's Jordan's. <laughs> Oh, that, that counts. Yeah, that there's, counts. The, there's the good hardware. Job. Good hardware. job, good job, Carter. Yeah, thank you, Carter. Can you check in at the desk and then give us a report on um, kind of the procedures? Thank you, sir. Great to have Carter roaming the gym for us as we're stuck here at the, uh, we'll call it the Alakai Executive Search Broadcast Center. Yeah, I was going to say we have uh, Telele Williava. Uh, for the Kuku Red Raiders, and she's a lefty, um, but in the game, she likes to shoot it from deep, from way out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where she takes her shots from, because I, I would imagine the ball rack would be situated right on the line, but you see her right in front of us um, getting some shots up. Uh, really nice lefty stroke as a freshman. Interesting thing about her in the game, she likes to drive and dribble and finish with her right hand, but she shoots lefty on her threes. And then to her right, from Kailua, we have Kiani Ho'olulu, who scored 24 points earlier today. A lot of them coming from the three-point line, nine for 12 from the free throw line, she, so she's a good shooter in her own right. Look at all these rebounders out there. Big and small. Yeah. Everyone getting involved. Yeah, that's neat. And, and it makes me think of for the slam dunk contest, sometimes they'll grab people from <laughs> yeah, the, the outside, <laughs> children to jump over. Always a little bit of a heart stopping uh, <laughs> moment for uh, <laughs> those of us putting this tournament on. But yeah, always a crowd pleaser. Let's give a shout out to Alakai Executive Search finding Hawaii's talent for the future. Find out more about Alakai Executive Search, go to 
alakaisearch.com, A-L-A-K-A-I-S-E-A-R-C-H.com. Led, of course, by Mr. Eric Keenan, Iolani class of 92. He's got some alums working with him there as well, Jill and Corey. Finding Hawaii's talent for the future. So I have a printout of the rules down here. Okay. And for the first round, one minute on the clock, five balls per rack, the five spots. The fifth ball per rack is a money ball worth two points. It'll be the purple basketball that we see going in warm-ups. The players must shoot all four balls on the rack prior to shooting the money ball. Okay. We're going to have four shooters, then we're going to go to a commercial break. Then we'll go get the last remaining four shooters. For the championship round, it'll be the top four scores. And the same rules apply. One minute on the clock, five balls per rack, five spots, fifth ball, money ball, worth two points. And then we were talking about that tiebreaker with Abby and how she wasn't quite sure what the rules were. So the tiebreaker, if we have one in the first round, it'll be the player with the most money ball makes. And if there's a tie, 20 seconds on the clock, and they can start from any spot on the court. And then for the tiebreaker, for the championship round, each player will shoot one at a time, 30 seconds on the clock, and they can start from any spot on the court. And I have the order for folks at home. Kamehameha and Lohi Candia will lead it off. Tailele Wailiava for Kuhuku will be next. Athena Tomlinson going third. And there's gonna be a change for Campbell. Aaliyah Bantolino is gonna be okay. in the three-point contest. She's fourth. Then they're gonna go to that media timeout. And then out of the media timeout, it'll go Christy Reynoso for Sierra Canyon, Ava Yoon for Sidwell Friends, Mele Sake seventh, and Kiani Ho'olulu shooting last. But that will be your order. That was determined randomly last night. Kyle Pape just told me all of that. And he's the one who's in charge of this three-point shootout. Thank you, Carter. Thank you, Kyle. Sometimes in these three-point contests, you'll have two shooters going at the same time on opposite ends yeah. and not really challenging each other, uh, but just in a matter of time, kind of um, stacking that. Hard, so, to, hard to watch. Yeah, and I think I think you'll hear cheers from both sides. So I like the format. I like that there's one shooter going uh, at a time. Kyle Pape is now collecting the shooters. Good three-point shooter. Near midcourt, right? Yeah. yeah. Kyle definitely has his Nikes on. Look at that shoe game out there. Racks are set up. If there happens to still be a tie after that first tiebreaker, we'll go to a sudden death round of 20 seconds on the clock. And go head to head with Thanks also to all the places where we get these racks from. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Of different sizes, though, yeah, and on certain ones, the money ball is on the lower rack. I'm wondering if that's going to come into play. Mr. Derek Lowe, also out here, one of the organizers of the slam dunk contest and the three-point contest. Working with the rebounders right now. Derek regarded as the best high school basketball player in Hawaii history. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that sentiment. His name would be brought up a couple years ago when J.J. Mandiquit as a freshman was really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he really got going. Yeah. And now he represents the United States. <laughs> 
gold yeah. medalist. Yeah, great to see the success that JJ has had. Of course, so Derek went on to Washington State, was an all Pac-10 first team player for the Cougars. You guys are just talking about that money ball placement on the racks. Kyle Pape said he'll be with the shooter and he'll move the money ball up to that okay. top rack. Yeah. To that make makes it easier sense. for them. I mean, these players are tall, you know, having to reach down, it's kind of an awkward shooting motion. We will sign off after this and leave the rest to OC16, Howard Dashevsky and Dean Shimamoto. Best wishes to Felipe Ohashiro, kind of lost his voice last night. I kind of know how that feels. I was marveled that he didn't, but it has happened. Sending my best yeah. vibes out. I remember Felipe. last year, last year in the boys classic, right? Yeah, it's, it's tough. There's different tees. Talk to him about that. <laughs> Share some of that with you, but you will be on vacation. So here we go, Kamehameha Kapalamas, Lohi Kendaya will get us started. Wearing number 23 for the Warriors. One minute on the clock. There's Kyle Pate. The money ball won't go for Lohi. Two in a row for three total. Money ball. See if she can find some success from the top. Two in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Three. Getting hot at the top of the key Four. here. Money ball is important though. Then that <laughs> got, got that ball from rack. the top. Up to nine. Lots of time. Money ball just misses. That one drops. Give me a 12. Can't get the money ball off. Finishes with 12. Great shooting. When, when she would make it, it would go straight in. Beautiful stroke. Hard to go first, too. Yeah, and so for point. these other competitors, they can see the timing of it. Um, uh, Tailele, Wiley Ava from Kahuku. From the wing now. Kuhuku played in the first game of day three. One run ball shot in. At the running ball. The top yep. swish. Two swishes in a row. Make it there three. There she goes. The money ball. Yeah. Good Another on the money ball. From the top. Everyone doing well from the top so far. Lots of time, too, to get all these balls in. Somewhat similar pace as Lohi. She's going to have to pick it up, though. Ty Lele finishes with eight. Great effort. Athena Tomlinson from Clovis West. Will be up next. She just got done playing in a game. Beating Iolani Raiders for third place. Now competing in the Alekai Executive Search. 
three-point contest. Be Aliyah Bantolina after her from Campbell, and then they'll take a commercial break. Kind of about a half time of the shootout. Five foot three senior headed to Boston College. Shoots with a high arch. Gets one through on the wing. Now from the top. Previous two shooters have found success from this spot. Let it rain. And so does Tomlinson. Hit three in a row. And oh, ball let it rain. In, out and in again. She's up to 11. Yeah. Hits the money ball on the wing. She's in the corner. She won't get to the money ball here. See if she can hit another in and out. Finishes with 14, so she is the leader so far. And if you could get past the first round, you kind of get an idea of how fast you got to shoot it. Yeah. Get through all the racks and all the balls. Tomlinson has kind of a, more movement involved in her, her setup and strokes. So. She does, she does. But maybe don't speed up and just put up on 14. <laughs> she did just fine, right, round. with yeah. the, <laughs> with the shots she got. She got yeah. 14 points up, our, our leading score thus far. Money ball was important. Now we see, I see Tomlinson, I'm looking over at that scores table, just kind of dancing around with Mele Sake. Aliyah Bantolina hits the first. Money ball. Derek Lowe helping her set up the rack. Yeah, there she goes. She's getting it going. Beautiful stroke here. From the top, Aliyah with three. Yeah, and on pace, I think, to go through all of these. She just has to get hot. Money ball, no. Like Abby said, there is a pacing to this. You get kind of a little bit winded as you get towards this end. But she's doing great. Money oh, ball if it goes, didn't, so she finishes with seven. So we'll take a break. But the next four will shoot after the TV timeout. And then there'll be a final round of four. Is that what it is, Ian? Is that what it is, top four advance yeah. to the next round? And so far yeah. in the lead, it looks like, um, well, those are four shooters. Top shooters have been Athena Tomlinson with 14. Yep. And Kamehameha's Lohi Kandaya had 12. Um, so it looks like the elimination number, uh, how much did um, the other two get? Eight and seven. Okay. So after four, we'll see who gets eliminated, but eight and seven are the ones that these next competitors will look to surpass. While we have the time, we'd like to recognize more of our generous tournament sponsors, HMSA, Brain Health Hawaii, Hardware Hawaii, Pacific Risk Solutions, Regency Capital, 
Forward Realty, Island Wide Air Conditioning Services, Hawaiian Host Group, Island Flooring, ACW, First Insurance Company of Hawaii, Honua Waterworks, Frida Takaki, and the family of the late Jason Nishikawa of the class of 1989. Thanks to all of our sponsors, that is just a few of them. We would not be able to put this tournament on without them. Two games remaining in the girls tournament. Alohi Kandia, Kandia, excuse me, and her Kamehameha Warriors will take on the Campbell Sabres. Aliyah Bantolina, you just saw her shoot for the consolation title. And then following that will be the championship game between Sidwell Friends and Sierra Canyon. And here's Sierra Canyon's Christy Reynosa. Carter Uechi's pick for this contest. Starting off hot. Moneyball. Yeah, and she has a stroke and a release and a motion built for this contest. I think Reynoso's done this before. <laughs> Looks like it. Just that setup. And release. Yeah. Very natural. Moneyball oh, again. 13 already for Reynoso. 15 seconds to go. She's definitely going to clear all of the balls. Hits the money ball there. Or maybe not. But she's got 16. That one counts. Great round. 18, 18. for Christy Reynoso. That she's the leader in the, the clubhouse. Round. Yeah. Great shooting. And she started off hot. I mean, hitting three out of the five yeah, on that first rack. Ava Yoon from Sidwell Friends, who will match up with Christy Reynoso in the championship game later on tonight, 8 o'clock Hawaii time. Ava Yoon, this might be a, this is Ian Young's pick. This is my pick. One minute on the clock. This is on the money ball. Two in a row, three in a row from the wing. The money ball is short though. Two in a row from the top. Three. Money ball, yes! Top of the key. She's in double figures with 10. 11. And tons of time left on the clock. The fastest shooter that we've seen so far of the six. Two in a row. All the time in the world for the money ball, and she hits it. 16 for Ava Yoon. Mele Sake of the Yolani Raiders. Crowd favorite. Needs to get 12, yeah, to get to the next round. Is that correct? Right now, she would need to get 13. 13, yes. Yeah. 12 to tie, 13 to win. Six-foot senior for the Raiders. Last year's Hawaii State Player of the Year. Money ball, yes. Two in a row for Mele. Make it three. The money ball as well. Come into the top. She's got seven. 
Can she get hot? Money ball from the top of the key big is one. good. That's a big one. She's in double figures. 12. Looking for that 13. She's got it. 10 seconds. Has to move the rock. Derek Lowe feeds her the ball. 13. Oh! Is that good? That's good. Is there a ref? No, I think they're going to count that. I think she 15. got it off. She got 15. She did get to 13, though, then to 15. Yeah. That could so be enough. Melee, yeah. It could be. We'll see with these next two shooters. We've got one more to go. Kailua's Kiani Ho'olulu. Yeah. So, so Good far, Reynoso, yeah. Yoon. Sake and Tomlinson. Ho'olulu needs 15 to be in the top five. Ho'olulu still looking for her first make. Is it the money ball? No. She stands to the left of the rack on the wing. Gets on the board. Interesting that she takes the ball from yeah, the left. Starting to get going yeah. here. Yeah. Here we go. Money ball from the top. Kiani, yes. That one drops. Needed that. Got to get hot. Up to seven. Final rack. Should be able to get a couple off. Finishes with eight. So it'll be Reynoso, Yoon, Sake, and Tomlinson. Now the Warriors, after supporting Candia, will go back into one of the classrooms yeah. slash locker rooms and prepare for their consolation final yeah. against Campbell. They got a game to play. Nice to see two representatives from Hawaii and yeah. two representatives from the mainland for this Alaka'i executive search three-point contest. Final round. Yeah. Now, what's the rules for this final round? Is it is this the winner of this determines the winner, or did they go? Carter, you with us? Can you recap where we stand? The final four, same format. They get to shoot all five balls from all five spots, and then if there's a tiebreaker, then they'll have that 30-second clock, and they can start from anywhere on the court. And is it top two advance from this second round? No, this is the final round. This will be it. So the, the, the winner of this round will be the winner of the whole thing. They will get the trophy, the beautiful trophy that Carter was showing us. Getting a nice picture with all the competitors. So I'm up here with Eric Keenan with Alaka'i Executive Search. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about what your company is and what you guys do? Yeah, sure. So we're a boutique search firm, which means we help uh, local companies find talent. So everyone is having a hard time finding good people to work for them. So they hire us to go find the people. So what does it mean to you to be able to sponsor the Iolani Classic and this three-point shootout and the slam dunk contest? Oh, yeah. I've been coming to this tournament, I don't know, maybe 30 plus years. So it, it runs deep, you know, and now my son's a basketball player and all my friends were played basketball and just awesome to see the local talent get to compete against uh, the mainland teams. Perfect. Thank you. Back to you, John. So the uh, Carter, the uh, slam dunk contest is a judged um, 
contest, not points, but Eric is a is a judge in that. Can you go ask him about like how difficult it is to, to score the uh, the slam dunk contest? It's a great question, Carter. Did you catch the question that um, John uh, wanted you to follow up with, uh, Eric? I think Eric is, is a judge for the slam dunk contest, and that's always pretty hard to come up with those numbers. Um, can you ask him about that? And does he leave room on early dunkers and all those different things that we always want to know about the judging a slam dunk contest? Uh, it's it's tough, but I normally vote for the local guys. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Hey, you heard it here first. No voting here. You got to make the buckets. Last year, Abby Tanaka from Iolani did just that. Forced her way into a sudden death shoot off. That was exciting when the um, the the young man from Kamehameha won. Oh yes, uh, the slam dunk. That was contest. incredible. Tomlinson. Tomlinson, right off the bat. <laughs> Two in a row, right? At the front of the rack. Did she get the money ball as well? No, nope. stuck it two. Loose ball, collected by Derek Lowe. Yeah, there's <laughs> Derek there. Three as she approaches the top of the key. Tomlinson headed to Boston College. They're getting a great one. This money ball's important. And she Got hits it. it. Nina sinks that one. Up to seven. Hits the money ball. And she gets to a oh. It's a solid score, 11. Let's see if it's enough. Tomlinson scored 14 points, got 11 here in the final round. Mele Sake gets up off the scores table bench. Mele scored 15 points in the first round to earn her trip here to the final round. Just getting some pointers from Derek Lowe right now. <laughs> She goes with her minute. That one rattles in and out. Lily takes a dribble. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta find her rhythm. There she goes. Rattles that one home. That one as well. The money ball she hits. Up to five. Six. 30 seconds to go. Moneyball rims out. Only two in a row. And the Moneyball. That gets her to 10. <laughs> 11. Ty Tomlinson. Moneyball takes her time, gets it up. Yeah. Finishes with 11 for Mele Sake. Tomlinson and Sake both with 11. Let's see who and goes now next. will it be yeah. Reynoso or will it be you? It like It'll you. be you. Yeah. Last two competitors will be facing each other in tonight's championship game. This is Ava Yoon from Sidwell Friends in Washington, D.C. Here 
Campbell's got two. Doubles it to four with the money ball. There she goes. Five. Two in a row from the wing and the money ball hits the front of the rim. Didn't get the money ball. A good start. Money ball from the top Big goes. One. She's up to 10. 26 seconds to go. Takes the lead up to 13. Money ball is short. Lots of time here. Money ball, two Six. points, makes it 16. They scored a beat. Ava Yoon with 16. Now the marker has been set. If Christy Reynoso can score 16 or, or more, but this will continue. If she can score 17 or more, she will be the Alakai Executive Search three-point contest champion. If she doesn't get to 16, Ava Yoon will get the trophy and the title. And also hits the first and the second. Money ball from the corner is good. Some trouble on the wing until that one and that money ball up to seven. Make it eight. Nine. Eleven if she hits the money ball and she does. Three, three on money balls. Fourteen. 15, the important shot, no, 15. Next one ties it. There we go, the money ball for the title, oh. rims out. Oh. We go to sudden death, overtime <laughs> shootout, just like last year. It was almost the Larry oh. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> On the last shot, but wow. Yeah, extra innings. It's Yoon versus Reynoso, Ian Young versus Carter Uechi. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know how to pick them. Yeah, and a you guys have a you guys have a championship matchup yeah, too, right? That's yeah, well. exactly right. So Carter, recap, they can shoot from wherever they want on the court from the racks. How many shots? As many as they can get off in 30 seconds. So it's just a shorter amount of time. So get to choose. Where was your spot, Ian? Yeah, um, I actually like the wing shots. And top of the key is nice as well. So I would choose that to, to kind of focus maybe on that wing yeah. and then go on top of the key and then wing, looks which like looks Ava like Yoon yeah, is going to do the same. A feeling you, she'll start at the wing, probably move to the top. 30 seconds. Should be able to get through maybe 12 or 13. So that's kind of discounting the corner, the wing, the top, and then the right wing. Yoon will go first. But the way she's been getting her shots up, I mean, she might be able to get pretty far. I asked mean, both these yeah. shooters. Yeah, she might get 15. Ava Yoon from Sidwell Friends. Missing on her first two. Gets on the board. Money ball. Just one from the wing. Up to three, getting hot from the top. The money ball is well. Seven. 
Seven seconds to go. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 in 30 seconds. Mind blowing number right there. Wow. Impressive run there. What was that like eight in a row? High fives Christy Reynoso. Reynoso knows what she has to do. And guess what? She could do it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Ava Yoon sets down a marker in 30 seconds, scored 11. She scored 16 in the first round, 16 in the finals. 11 and half the time in the, sh the shoot off. Reynoso gets two in a row. Moneyball rims out, 20 seconds. I think this will be considered her money ball. She made that. That's it. Six. Seven, eight, last shot. Oh, oh. and that was the money ball. <laughs> that, she almost got there. Wow. Congratulations to Ava Yoon, the Alakai Executive Search three point contest champion in the 2023 Iolani Prep Basketball Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. She will now be interviewed on Spectrum OC 16 by Jordan Helle. Congratulations to her. They have bigger things to fight for as a team later on tonight. The Glenn Young Championship Trophy will be awarded tonight after the championship final between Sierra Canyon and Sidwell Friends. Washington DC versus the LA area. Coming all the way from the East Coast and the West Coast to here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That's what we do here at the Ilani Prep Basketball Classic. Thanks to everyone who watched. Thanks to everyone who helped put this on. Zach, our cameraman, Carter Uechi, Dane Kurihara, who's uh, troubleshooting remotely, Evan McCartney, who set up the audio system that allows us to do all of this, especially having Carter, the roaming reporter, Carter Uechi. Great job, Carter. Good job, Ian. We'll miss you at the boys tournament. That is December 18th and 22nd. Make sure you tune in. All 32 games will be broadcast on Iolani Live, Iolani School's YouTube account. But we will be signing off here for the girls tournament, turning it over to OC Spectrum OC 16 on Spectrum Cable Television. For everybody involved here at Yolani School, for everybody in the tournament, thanks so much. Thanks to you for watching. This is John Tamanaha. Have a great rest of the weekend. Aloha.